God, no. You want to work. God, no. You really want all this. More than anything I've ever wanted in my whole life. Maxine, you're the lead story. I see us all as one sisterhood. Hello and thanks for joining us. First, a bit of Desperate Housewives, a bit Mad Men, a bit Big Little Lies. We're starting with a glam drama about 1960s high society called Palm Royale. Loosely based on the novel Mr and Mrs American Pie by Juliet McDaniel, it's set in the super-rich Florida enclave of Palm Beach at America's snobbiest spa club. Our TV critic, Deep de Laurent, has been speaking to the cast. How did you get past security? I came in the back. There are no doors on the back of the Palm Royale? I never said I used the door. I had only been in it's one of the most anticipated shows of the year. Kristen Wiig plays Maxine Delacourt, a grifter who manipulates her way into a high society club in 1969. I lived at that time. I mean, I'm that old. But you, you, you weren't born yet. Yes. Well, no, I wasn't, but you I... You were a baby. It, well, not yet. Yeah. A little bit after yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I mean, there's something to be said about that time period, but specifically Palm Beach, because nowhere else in the world did it look like that at that time. It was very specific. It had its own style and interior design and and society rules. It was just its own, like, country. Robert, shake me another martini, and then let's play doctor. At its heart, Palm Royale is a soapy drama, sure, but it also tackles women's rights and race relations at the time. Maxine, you're the lead story. I see us all as one sisterhood. We'd like to think that uh, 50 years ago was a very different time. And it's not. We wrote a pilot that was about a woman who was trying to exercise uh, her choice. And, um, and it, that was not a right that had been taken away yet by the Supreme Court. I think for me, being African-American at this time is a very specific moment in history for us. And I think being in this environment with people that don't necessarily look like her um, forces her to realize that everybody doesn't live in the same reality that she does. The desire to be beautiful and and uh, and put your uh, a beautiful self forward in, in today's culture and social media is identical to the same, you know, in, in, in certain high societies in American culture, you know, post-World War II. Palm Beach? At the Palm Royale, it's all about the women. Men may hold better positions, but they're mostly criminals, or like Maxine's husband, Douglas. Fools. Fires of hell's pits is going on here. Douglas is obviously, he's a kind of per a perfect product of like rich America, right? The blue blooded guy. He doesn't have any idea of what's going on in the war or the civil rights movement or the women's rights movements. I mean, he's only worried about, you know, his own, uh, his own little bubble, right? And I think that's why all of these characters are so fun to watch because they're all like that. Something the show is also a visual treat with sumptuous costumes and set designs to reflect the era. One of the things that they did, which was so amazing, is that the fabric that they used for the costumes was all authentic fabric. You know, they would literally find Cartier fabric from the 1960s. All of the clothing, almost all of it was, was uh, vintage pieces from Miami and from Palm Beach in the 1960s. They were finding these incredible, so you felt it when you put the clothes on. I love fashion. So to see the differences between like what we were wearing as the bookstore crew, like the earth tones, the browns and the burgundies versus the high society women in the pastels and like the heels and all of the makeup was just so exciting, even down to the set pieces. There were moments on, on set where in the office that we have, there was a number two pencil from 1969, like little details that people will never see, just made it even more rich. What is Evelyn wearing? Sleeves. <laughs> Did you guys get to keep any of your clothes? No. I wish. Well <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, I Julie, really wish. <laughs> me, I would just be in a bunch of nightgowns. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> In Palm Beach, the secret is like a loaded gun. No, 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 no. You never know when it will go off. Or who it might hit. Ladies! I know, yeah, surprised to see me, considering you left me for dead. Be some Next, the new mu mural by British street artist Banksy has been defaced within days of appearing in London. Fencing and camera surveillance have been put in place to protect the artwork. The stenciled mural appeared on a street near Finsbury Park in the north of the city this week. The enigmatic artist seemed to confirm his role in the creation, posting before and after pictures of the transformed wall on Instagram on Monday. Well, local people are excited about it. I think it's very interesting um, because of the way it talks about climate change and how we're trying to... Uh, make up for the damage caused to the nature in, in, in general. Uh, I think it's amazing, honestly. Um, I've always known about Banksy's artwork. I didn't actually know that there was going to be one so close to home, so, yeah, really nice to see. The American photographer Annie Leibovitz has been inducted into France's prestigious Academy de Beaux-Arts, an organisation created in 1816 dedicated to the arts. For the occasion, she wore a custom-made outfit by the French fashion house Louis Vuitton. There to present the ceremonial sword at the outcome of the ritual was her longtime friend and collaborator, American Vogue editor Anna Wintour. I truly believe that this honor you've given me today expresses the conviction that even though it is changing, the photograph is more relevant and has more force in our lives than ever before. The only thing more daunting than a French fashion show is a French academy. <laughs> and by a similar principle, the only thing more intimidating than Annie Leibovitz is Annie Leibovitz brandishing a sword. <laughs> so I stand before you today in awe and some degree of terror. The truth is that for the first several years of our collaborations, I was as cautious of Annie as I was astounded by her work. Next, France's Michelin Star Awards for restaurants are out for this year and 62 establishments received new stars, many of them for the first time. And there was history made with the youngest French three-star chef ever. Oliver Farry has more. The creme de la creme of French cuisine gathered in Tours on Monday for the annual Michelin Award ceremony. The gastronomic bible dished out new stars to 62 restaurants, and among the recipients was one notable record breaker. Fabien Ferré, chef of Table de Castellet in Provence, became at the age of 35 the youngest French chef ever to receive three stars, a success he puts down to his never give up attitude. You have to keep fighting because life is full of setbacks. I've had mine and I picked myself up. Now I'm here at a three-star place. You've always got to hang in there. You've got to fight. Jérôme Bonctel of Le Gabriel in Paris also secured a third Michelin star for the first time. I'm so happy. All those years I worked, but I didn't get any reward. I'm just too happy. But the Michelin Guide continues to be heavily male-dominated, which the organisers acknowledge as a problem. Only six of the chefs recognised were women. One of them, Eugénie Bézia, chef at Espadon at the Ritz in Paris, said she hoped to spur more women to success. You have to persevere in this business. You have to keep going. You have to hang in there. You have to inspire young women. I've got some in my team. We've got some in the restaurant and that's it. As long as you've got talent, there's a place for everyone, that's all. A total of 639 restaurants in France now hold at least one of the coveted stars. But there can also be disappointments in the competitive race. 28 establishments lost a star this year, including one formerly three-star restaurant. Well, that brings us to the end of the show. Thanks for joining us. We'll leave you with one of the blockbuster exhibitions of the year that's opening next week at Paris's Musée d'Orsay. Monet, Renoir and Degas are in the spotlight to celebrate 150 years of the Impressionists, an artistic movement 
that revolutionized art. See you next time.